and many more Excalibur. He certainly has. He has been a mainstay. But here is the challenge. The blue-eyed Balor is here. She Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that just because a billionaire can, doesn't mean a billionaire should. I think it's pretty safe to say I'm really kind to AEW on this channel. It's not that I don't have criticisms with the company, just that when I do, it tends to be the general popular opinion. Whereas when I criticize the WWE, I'm usually playing devil's advocate. But something that I thought initially was a cool gesture, then became a bit odd, now is just a bad idea. Today we're talking about John Moxley, and you know what? For the sake of people watching right now, I'm changing the music bed to prove a point. One sec. Ugh. God, doesn't that just suck the energy out of things? For those not in the know, this is former WWE and AEW World Champion John Moxley's new theme song, replacing unscripted violence by the Violent Idols with Wild Thing by the Trogs, a song that came out in 1965. The short TLDR version of the upcoming rant is this. Why? Now I get that Tony Khan has been flashing money to acquire music licenses for his favorite performers. It began with Brody Lee's tribute show where he acquired the rights in perpetuity to Old 55 by Tom Waits. The purpose being that music distributors couldn't pull down the tribute, citing copyright ownership over the audio. Shortly after that, Tony Khan gave Jungle Boy one hell of a Christmas gift, the rights to Baltimore's Tarzan Boy. And while this is probably the greatest song on the planet for a guy like Jungle Boy, it doesn't make as much sense for Marco Stunt or even Luchasaurus, as the old Jurassic Express theme is better fitted for him. After that, Orange Cassidy got Where Is My Mind by the Pixies, and I'm not gonna lie, mwah, absolutely perfect song for him. It's a slacker stoner high school anthem fit for a man whose gimmick is a slacker stoner who has all the energy in the world but doesn't exert it unless he has to. However, now Chris Statlander, Chuck Taylor, and Trent Beretta, the, sorry, Trent? All use this song too, and it just doesn't fit them like it fits the freshly squeezed one. Now the ass-kicking deathmatch anarchist dude is coming to the ring to what is universally accepted as a love song. Well, unless you count the Sam Kinison version. You're alive. A big problem amongst all these songs versus their original tracks is that none of these things are instrumentals or karaoke tracks. That means commentary gets drowned out with the vocals, generally ruining the focus of the viewer. If the song I played underneath my voiceover right now has vocals, it becomes tougher for you, right? If you're listening because you like my commentary, you've got vocals competing with it. If you're listening because you like the song, you've got me interrupting it. Alright, enough of that. Yeesh. And we're not even getting down to the terms of these music deals. Tony Khan likes to claim that he gets the rights to these songs in perpetuity, which basically means until death. But that doesn't necessarily mean in every way. There are limits, and we don't know if those limits mean that they'll have to dub over these tracks when AEW's iconic moments end up on a streaming platform. It doesn't mean that they won't have to dub these tracks in video games, or if these songs have impact on shop items like albums or iTunes or Spotify. Because I really doubt that Universal Music Group is down with losing sales on their intellectual property just so Dynamite the Music Volume 1 can have Tarzan Boy on it. And why is Tony Khan going after the classic songs? Does he really think people under 20 know or care who the Pixies are? Where is his mind? <laughs> see what I did there? Uh, I'll stop. It's cool that the con in charge wants to make things more special. Let's be honest, the Sandman's iconic entrance isn't iconic unless Metallica's playing behind it. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. This guy is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the rights to theme songs for people that won't necessarily be in the company five years from now. Doing this doesn't change ratings, it doesn't spike the attendance numbers, it's not going to affect who does and doesn't watch AEW. 
it won't bring fresh eyes on the product like getting popular current artists to create original songs would. This money would be better spent elsewhere, like, I don't know, advertising dynamite on other shows. Or maybe towards a production budget that includes a director who knows when not to show a bad spot on TV. Of course, this is all just my opinion, though, and I do gotta ask, what do you think of John Moxley dumping unscripted violence for Wild Thing? Does this song suit him more than the other one did? And do you think Tony Khan should keep flexing by buying up rights to songs, or should he scale it back? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, because I want you to be a part of the conversation, too. For now, though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.